Hi, and welcome to our fireside chat. Hi, uh, there's no fire. This is <laughs> no. my backyard. <laughs> I'm Lauren Mendoza Tabinas. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Services. And I'm Jane Willenbring. I am an Associate Professor of Geological Sciences, and I'm also the Chair of the Graduate Admissions Committee for the department. Yes, yeah, so we're here today to answer the most common questions we get when applying to our program. So hopefully you find this really helpful and you can find all the resources and the information we mentioned today on our website. So uh, first things first, very important piece of information for people. When is the deadline for yes. the application? <laughs> the deadline is December 1st, 2021. And I know that there's been a lot of talk about um, whether the GRE is required in social media and among programs, do we require the GRE? We do not require the GRE, and it's not re so it's not required to apply to our program and won't be considered when we review holistically the rest of your application. Okay, cool. Um, what else do people need? Yes, so for a complete application, uh, you need the online application. You need three letters of recommendation, your statement of purpose, as well as our new supplemental application, which is online, and uh, scanned copies of your transcripts. And if applicable, a uh, English language exam, and optional is a diversity statement. Awesome, a couple questions about that. So. Um, I remember when I was going to grad school, I had to pay $10 and send a paper stamped copy to <laughs> of my transcript to all the programs. We don't require that or anything? No, you just have to upload. Um, a scanned copy could be official or unofficial of your transcript and make sure it has your name, your institution, your grades, uh, the units and things like that. And again, you just upload a scanned copy to the application. That is a huge huge relief. <laughs> <laughs> so worried about that. Um, another question about uh, some of the things that you mentioned. You said that there's a language exam that is required for non-native English speakers. What exam do they have to take? Yes, yeah, so if that applies to you, you will take the TOEFL exam and you can find information about the minimum score and if you uh, qualify for a TOEFL waiver online. And there's also an application fee waiver that they might uh, qualify for. How do they figure out if they do? Definitely. So there are many ways to qualify for an application fee waiver. Um, you can find out if you qualify with a list of criteria online as well as instructions on how to apply for one. Awesome. Another question that we got is international students mm -hmm. and undocumented DACA students, um, do they are they allowed to apply to the program? Do they qualify for funding? Yes, so we uh, welcome any student, regardless of their immigration status, to apply and you will be considered for funding. So please consider applying to our program. Awesome. And um, how many letters of recommendation do people need? Yes, so you need three letters of recommendation. Um, and only three, so there's a lot of consideration that goes into who you choose and what makes a strong letter. Mm -hmm. um, maybe as a reviewer you can talk about some guidance that you can give to students when they're considering who to ask. Sure, yeah, that's something that causes students a lot of angst, mm -hmm. I think. Um, who to ask, um, what should they talk about, um, who would write the best letter, um, and I think it's helpful to ask people who know the student professionally um, and know you well professionally as well as possible. So if you did research with someone, um, if you uh, took a bunch of classes from someone, those are both great um, ideas for who to ask for a letter. Um, for that purpose, faculty and research staff can make mm -hmm. really great letter writers because they can often give good examples of how you match the qualities uh, that we would look for in successful graduate students. Um, things that we as faculty at Stanford look for in graduate students are, are you intellectually curious? Are you mature? Are you resourceful? Like, can you figure things out? Um, uh, how to do things sometimes even independently. Um, we're looking for people to have good communication skills. And these are also things that we'll hone through the process mm -hmm. of them going to graduate school, but we just want to make sure that they're um, eager and ready to start uh, from the minute that they're here. Um, I think that the most important aspect of uh, a PhD that we're looking for is that a PhD graduate work, also master's work, is very rewarding, 
but there are tough times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can be incredibly frustrating sometimes when you have an experiment that just keeps failing, keeps failing, keeps failing, or it seems to fail, um, but it's actually telling you something really interesting, and all you have to do is push through um, some of those tough times. And so I think that one of the really important things is that someone will stick with the program and um, see it out to its completion. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to say, in good times and bad, <laughs> sort of like a really temporary uh, <laughs> partnership <Yeah>. there. <laughs> um, the supplemental questions or application is also a really great way of, of uh, talking about those different attributes and qualities that you might have that your letter writers can also talk about. And that's new this year. Yeah, so the supplemental application is new this year. And again, you can find um, a reference document about what to expect on our website, but you'll find the questions themselves on the application. So the supplement just tells us a little bit more about who you are and how you got here. They are a set of focused questions that you can answer directly in the application. Some of the things that we're looking for is what motivates you, again, like Jane said, to apply to a graduate program and then specifically our, you know, our own. Um, a little bit about your perseverance and maturity, um, independence and curiosity. These are qualities that we found really um, apparently in our most successful graduate students. So we'd like to hear more about you and again, your choice to apply here. Um, something that you can mention, say, if you had a really tough academic quarter is what you learned from that experience. You know, this would be the place to discuss that to really complement your statement of purpose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, people have tough academic quarters and your GPA drops for things, reasons mm -hmm. outside your control. And it's totally understandable. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, you writing about yourself, you're writing in the supplemental application. Um, a, another question we get is if it's required for applicants to contact faculty mm -hmm. before they apply. Yeah, no. So we can carefully consider all of the applications that we receive. Um, we pour over them um, to make sure that everybody is considered. And so it is absolutely not required that people contact faculty. I will say that it's sometimes a really good idea just from a pragmatic perspective mm -hmm. because you might, um, you know, the faculty member that you mentioned as being your top choice of person that you want to work with might not be taking students mm -hmm. that year or it could be that you know the thing that you want to work with with that faculty member they haven't worked on that for a decade and mm -hmm. they're <laughs> focusing more on their new funded projects and so that's a great way of finding out that kind of thing so that you can save yourself an application fee if it doesn't work out for you um, on the flip side um, if you put in an application you know someone who you don't know about maybe a junior faculty member might have some funding for someone new and it might be in the same area even and so you they would be able to see your application um, it's also a good idea because you know you are interviewing us <laughs> and applying <laughs> and thinking about working with us as much as we're thinking about the best students to have in the program and so mm -hmm. I find that the more points of contact that people have, the more opportunity we have to see your communication mm -hmm. skills and to get to know you. And then on the flip side, you get to know us more as well. Yeah, definitely. So again, it's not required, but it's a great idea. And so uh, all of this is to help us get to know you better. Like we mentioned, um, the supplement application will complement your statement of purpose. So. Could you tell us a little bit how it's different or what opportunity um, is provided in writing a statement of purpose? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and this is one of the things that, like this is not the tone that I would use to describe it, but it's like, why are you here? <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> why Stanford? Why us? Um, so it's, it's true though. Why are you applying to do a, a PhD? What sparked your scientific curiosity is a good way of sort of um, talking about your scientific journey in the beginning. Um, I personally like to hear about the arc of students' scientific journey, where you started, mm -hmm. what you're doing now, and then what you um, plan or want to do in the future and how, how all that ties together. Um, if someone's been out of school for a while, that's totally fine. If there's a substantial period of time between um, the degrees that you're mm -hmm. seeking, 
I think that that's actually something that's really good to put in. You've probably um, learned a lot in that period between your degrees. And um, what did that teach you? What was it? What did it teach you? Finally, I think one of the um, most important parts about this is, you know, maybe you're interested in graduate school, but why do you want to go to Stanford? Mm -hmm. So why would the environment at Stanford, why would the faculty at Stanford be absolutely the best fit to fulfill your career goals, whatever they might be? Yeah, and our department has so much to offer. We have truly amazing faculty, um, a great research environment and um, community culture here. Uh, it's so vibrant and uh, everyone's eager to learn and share and we think that yeah we have a lot to offer so we hope that you consider applying for our fall 2022 cohort and as always if you have any questions you can reach out to me or Jane our contact information is on the website but we really hope that you consider applying to our program this year. Yeah, really excited to hear more about your path and how Stanford could fit into it. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for listening. Bye.